<laughs> this is my wife. A lot of people ask if, if her and my daughter are sisters, but no, she is my wife. And uh, I don't tell her age. Uh, I was 17 and she was 14 when we started dating, and I'm 51. But it's I'm not a lot of dating, I'm 16. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, you started liking me. One week she went. You started liking me. That's my story. <laughs> She went home one week and she told her parents, I can't stand there and Lord. And the next week she couldn't wait for me to start calling her and all that. But she wasn't allowed to date until she was 16. We grew up singing in church and uh, the little church up the holler where you got behind the piano and you hollered. That's how we learned to, to sing. And that's where we were married. And uh, God has blessed us. We've been married for 28 years. 
And why don't you introduce the kids and tell them their testimony? Well, years ago, and right after Dan and I were married, it took me about six years to convince him to marry me. We dated for six years. <laughs> and, um, he says he was working his way through pharmacy school, but anyway. And right after we got married, we started wanting to have a baby. And I just thought things were going to go real smooth because we were Christians. We were serving the Lord and the best way we knew how. And we held positions in the church. I was helping with the children's church and running a little nursery. And he was a, a youth pastor. And I just thought things were just going to go real smooth. <coughs> well, they did not. We ended up going to the doctors and trying to figure out why we couldn't have a baby. And uh, I miscarried our first baby right at Mother's Day weekend. And you talk about a young Christian lady that did not understand what God was doing. Now I can look back and see where he was holding me all the way through that valley and teaching me. And I, I, was, I, I became so close to the Lord through that time of our life. Well, the Lord ended up healing my body, and I praise him for it. I remember coming to the altar. I was a pastor's wife at this point. And I simply knelt down one night, being totally exhausted. Have you ever been at wit's end, like you can't take anything else? That's where I was. And I said, Lord, if you'll heal my body and give me a baby, Every new stage I stand on, every new church I walk into, I'm going to tell those people what you've done for me. But Lord, if you decide not to heal my body, I'm going to serve you anyway. And I think this is the point he was wanting me to get to. Because you've given me salvation, I'm on my way to heaven, and that's enough. But I had to have peace that night. And I stood up from that altar, and I truly felt the Lord pour a big old bucket of the peace of God that passeth all understanding. If you've never felt the peace of God, oh my goodness, you are missing out. And uh, didn't know what he would decide to do, but it wasn't too long after that we attended a healing service for a brother who had a cancer spread tumor. We had they had called a fast and a and a prayer day for him. We'd been doing that, and I know that was the night God healed me. It'd be weeks down the road we'd find out we were pregnant, and that was with our daughter Faith Danielle. Now you know why we named her Faith. And um, she's going to be 23 on the 24th of this month, 23 years old. And um, she does accept donations for her birthday. If you want it, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I am totally kidding. I'm not because I'm moving out. Stop it. <laughs> she loves to hold young young girls conferences. Are there any 10 year old girls in here? 10 year old and up? Oh, good. Faith holds young girls conferences for girls ages 10 and up every year. This past year. She held one, it's called True Girls, True Purpose Girls Conference. And there was 370 young ladies just like you in the, under that one roof. And boy, they had fun. And at the end of that service, the altar was lined and several of them accepted Jesus in their heart. And we're so proud of what God is doing in Faith's life. And then um, I wasn't praying for another baby. I'm not going to lie to you. I just wasn't. I was, I was real happy to one. That God knew we needed a baby boy. So here he here he sits Darren Samuel along. We named him Darren after his dad, but we call him Samuel. And um, he used to be very, very shy. And God has transformed him into a young man who stands behind the pulpit and proclaims the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you, you're not looking at a perfect family. We would drive you crazy, Pastor. Five minutes down the road in that van, you'd say, Let me out of here. Y'all are nuts. <laughs> but you're looking at a blessed family. We're blessed. If you're sitting by someone that you love tonight, you're blessed. Amen. God has blessed you with that friend or, or with that child or with that husband or with that grandparent. Let's love on each other tonight and love on the Lord. And we are so happy that you are here. You're being so kind to us. Help me sing this if you would. Tis so sweet to trust in.
want you to sing really loud so they can hear y'all. Hold on a minute. I want to say something to them. Now, when Faith and Samuel was your age, when my kids that are up here with me, when they were your age, when Faith was your age, you know what I would say to them? I would say, Jesus loves you so much. You know that, don't you? Don't ever forget, no matter where you're at, no matter what you do, no matter where you come from, no matter what your name is, Jesus loves you, okay? So when you sing this, sing this loud and sing it proud, okay? And faith will help you. She knows the words. Look at faith. Here we go. Y'all look great. Look at faith. Yeah. Share it, 
So it was a big step of faith for our family to go full time. Uh, prior to that, my kids were in school, public school. Everybody thinks we homeschooled uh, them, but they were in public school. So they get home sometimes on the weekend real late and have to get up real early. Uh, my wife was at home taking care of the home front. And I was working 12 hour shifts in the pharmacy, two, three, four a week. And then the Lord put us in full-time ministry three years ago, and now we're together all the time. <laughs> uh, before that, we weren't together all the time. But now, everywhere we go, there we are. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why people laugh other than you have family. Mm -hmm. You think about that, being together all the time. And uh, so things are changing as my family is getting older and, uh, you know, uh, they, they get a little bit more verbal these days than what they used to. Uh, and sometimes we have fellowship that's intense. But we always have fellowship. One day we were in the car and Mrs. Lore said, I think I know what this family needs to do. We were having one of those intense fellowship times. And she said, I think we need to uh, uh, practice more kindness. I said, good, why don't you start? Well, that didn't work too well that day. She doesn't think I said it quite like that. I doubt that I did. We were in Tennessee, and the church had put us in a lodge in Tennessee, and it had, next to the lodge, it had Jim's Smokehouse, where they had barbecue ribs, pot roasts, pinto beans, and cornbread, and bread pudding. It was just wonderful. But they didn't have continental breakfast. And I just don't think you're much of a motel if you don't have continental breakfast. <laughs> and I got up in the morning, my favorite hymn is Come and Dine. And I thought, Lord, what am I going to do? I was outside. Mrs. Lord was inside the bedroom reading her Bible. The kids were in the next room, dead in bed. And I'm outside <laughs> thinking, I've got to provide food for my family. What am I going to do? The Lord told me to look up. I looked up and I saw what looked like a big yellow M, and it was in the sky. <laughs> and so I knew if I'd get there that I could get food. I went back to the door, and I knocked on the door, knowing that Mrs. Lord was reading her Bible, and I knocked on the door. She didn't answer. I knocked on the door. I didn't have my room key. I knocked again, <laughs> and she said, do you have your room key? I thought if I had my room key, I'd already been in the room. <laughs> so I knocked again. She came to the door. She opened up the door, and she said, I think you need to be more patient. So I'm going to McDonald's for you, dear. So I got in our car, and I took out for McDonald's, and I got in the drive-thru at the drive-thru at McDonald's. And when I got there, there were two cars in front of me. Now, I worked at McDonald's. That gave me enough time, I knew, to check my Facebook status. I might have had a friend request. Or maybe somebody wanted me to send 20 spinning crosses to let them know I love Jesus. And I looked down just long enough for the two cars to move in front of me, and I'm getting honked at by the hangry lady behind me. I turned around and I thought, seriously, lady, it's just a biscuit, but I understand. And so I pulled up to the speaker, and on the inside, the guy looking out to me at the car, he said, do you care to wait just a minute? I stuck my head out of the car like a turtle coming out of its shell, and I said real loud, take all the time you need. <laughs> God wasn't in that, but it felt really good to do that. Well, he come back and he took my order and he repeated my order correctly on the first time. That was a good day mm. right there. And then he said, sir, thank you for your patience. I stuck my head out of the car again. And I said, that's okay. Everybody needs to slow down. Everybody's in too big of a hurry. 
We need to just take our time. And I started going around to get my food, and the Lord said, turn around and look at her. I turned around, and I said, yeah, she's as mean looking as I thought she'd be. <laughs> the Bible says the sheep know his voice of the shepherd. And then he said something that really confused me. He said, buy her breakfast. I said, do what? He said, buy her breakfast. I said, but Lord, she just horn cussed me. <laughs> you laugh because you've been guilty. <laughs> and then he said something to me that I want to tell you before I sing this song. He said, you don't know her. I know her. And you're to be the light of the world. And you're to be kind and gentle and good. I took my kids to the Holy Lands years ago, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. And they have <laughs> built a bear factory there where you go in and you get these little dolls that you stuff their bellies full of little tokens. Y'all know that have so many tokens because it's cheating every token. But you can put love and joy and peace and gentleness and kindness and laughter inside of these bears and take them home. I've often thought it'd be cool to take some church folk to build a bear factory. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Lord that day told me, you don't know her. Her husband might have Alzheimer's. Her mama might be fighting cancer. Her grandson might be on caught up in this drug epidemic. You be nice to her. Be kind. I wrote this song a few years ago. I don't know about you, but I get so tired of turning on the news. We get the news out of West Virginia right now. My mama, 77, the other day she was with me. She said, I'm so tired of hearing all this political uh, news. I said, Mom, I was just in Missouri a week ago. He's out there too. And everybody's slinging mud at everybody. And everybody's mad at everybody. And everybody's blaming everybody. And we as the church sometimes get caught up in it. We need to understand we have the answer yeah. for all the problems yeah. of this world situation. His name is Jesus. Right. We're in a world of hurt. I wrote this song. Let's turn this world of hurt into a world of hope. Listen to this song, would you? By the way, I bought her her biscuit. I hope they forgot her butter. <laughs> Job was a good man, so righteous and true. The trouble came not from and tore his world to. His wife kept saying, just curse your God and die.
opportunity now to in turn be a blessing to them. I need a couple of guys to come. We're going to pass the offering plate. They're going to go right on singing. Uh, but I want you to give whatever you're capable of giving, knowing that you're making an investment in God's kingdom, not just here tonight, but wherever these folks go. Now, Portsmouth, my mom was mistaken, right in that tri-state area right yes. there. Near yes, sir. Yes. I'm I married a Milton girl. Did you? you married married I married a Milltown girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I've been in the Huntington Mall every, every Thanksgiving for That's all I remember. 15 minutes from <laughs> So anyway, I know we're right close. These guys are going to come. We're going to receive an offering. You give uh, what you can. Yeah. And uh, that's all we ask you to do is give what you can. If you don't have a nickel, that's okay. But give what you can. Be a blessing for them just like they've been a blessing to you. Uh, and then if you can, at the end of the service, go by their private table. They'll tell you more about that in just a moment. Let's pray. Then they're going to sing as you can. Father, thank you for a family that uh, put everything on the line to serve you. Lord, we, we don't know the struggles they face day in and day out and week in and week out. What we do know They've overcome the obstacles and they've stayed at it for the cause of Christ. Lord, they've blessed us tonight. May we in turn be a blessing to them. And uh, Lord, that's all we can ask is help us to be a blessing to them. Use them as they continue to minister to our hearts tonight. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. We sing a variety of songs, and this is an old, old song I used to sing with my mom and dad, and I'm getting a little upset at all these churches that are pushing our senior citizens in the back corner. You can learn some of these new contemporary songs, and I'm all for it, but don't forget some of these hymns and some of these old songs like this. Now, I'm singing this for the senior citizens. If you don't like it, the rest of you just smile. When I'm tossed on my sea and the waves cover me and the clouds won't let the sun shine Inspirations, and they sang this song 
Uh, when I wake up to sleep in the morning, we won't see you in